Today I'm going to break down the three main types of femoral acetabular impingement and what they look like in terms of movement restrictions and then what we can do to help improve those movement restrictions and be able to do things like walk or exercise with less movement limitation. The cool thing is that we can use natural human asymmetrical patterns to gain an understanding for how these things develop on one side more than the other. Femoral acetabular impingement or FAI for short is not something that is uncommon but if you are experiencing or you think you might be experiencing symptoms related to FAI, please go see a qualified physical therapist. This video is for educational purposes only. When we refer to FAI, generally what we're seeing is that this femur head within the hip socket or the acetabulum is going to be restricted and it's not going to be able to move smoothly within it. So when it goes to move into a given position or orientation, it gets jammed on the actual rim of that acetabulum and it's unable to move. This first one is relatively common and it is when you have a jamming or impingement of the femur head on the anterior and superior rim of the pelvis right here. So generally what this entails is a pelvis that is stuck in external rotation. So this femur is going to be stuck in external rotation too. This generally happens more on the left side of the body because most people have a more externally rotated left pelvis. If you wanna learn more about this left AIC pattern I'm going to be referring to, I will link a video down below in the description. It is very helpful content for understanding this video. Typically when the impingement becomes a significant issue, you have a lot of compression on the back side of the pelvis right here. So this is pulling closer together right here, which is also going to restrict internal rotation of the pelvic and nominate bone itself as well. So typically when people go to shift over to the left, they can't do that very well because in order to shift over to the left, you have to be able to internally rotate this innominate bone right here and this femur needs to slide back, but it can't do that. So it gets jammed on that anterior and superior surface of the acetabulum. We can use a couple of objective tests to see if this is most likely the case. The ones I'm going to be referring to are an Ober's test, which is going to be measuring internal rotation of the pelvis and the femur. Also a hip flexion test, which is going to be measuring external rotation of the pelvis and the femur. Also a straight leg raise, which is going to be measuring more internal rotation. And we're also going to be measuring the internal rotation capabilities of the femur within the acetabulum itself. So in this first type, we're going to see a restriction in the tests that measure internal rotation. This would be your Obers test, which is not going to be passed because that leg is not going to be able to get to the floor due to this pelvis being stuck in external rotation. We're also going to see a limitation in the straight leg raise, generally less than 45 degrees or around that range. And we're also going to see a limitation in internal rotation of the femur itself, usually less than 20 degrees. The second type of impingement we see occurs more so on the right side in most cases. This is more medial rather than superior. So superior is up, medial is more in. So you're gonna see it occur more so right in here. And the reason for that is because the right side tends to have a pelvis that's more internally rotated and this femur tends to be more adducted like this. So in this orientation right here, what we see is more medial and anterior impingement right around here, especially when that right hip goes to internally rotate. There's a saying I like to use of you can't get somewhere you're trying to go if you're already there. So if this right hip tries to internally rotate and it can't do that anymore, then we're going to get pinched right around that anterior and medial aspect of the acetabulum. Because this side has more access to internal rotation, we're going to see a restriction in external rotation based measures. So the right femur is going to have less external rotation, generally around 25 degrees or less. The right femoral internal rotation will be better than the left because the left does not have as much of that. The last one we're going to see is more associated with the right side as well, but this is going to show up a little bit differently because what we're going to see here most of the time is a pelvis that is a little bit more compensatory in nature. So oftentimes, but not always, we see this left hip come up and over the top, which is going to pin this right side down. So if this right side is pinned down, we're going to see a restriction or impingement on the lateral and superior or outside and up side of this acetabulum right here. This is going to show up the most when the individual tries to lift up their leg and move it out to the side or 
A, B duct it because that is what's going to really pinch that side and pull it together. So this person's going to have very little abduction on that side. They're also going to have a decrease in external rotation on the right femur, and their hip flexion will also not be very good. If it's the case where the left side is coming up and over the top, the left side is forward, but it's bringing the right side with it. So you're also going to see a limited Ober's test on the right side as well. So those are the three types. Now we can talk about what we can do to improve movement quality. And again, if you're experiencing issues, please go see a physical therapist. Do not self-diagnose. This is just to give you some information. Let's go to the first one where we have more of that anterior and superior impingement that occurs more so on the left side in many cases. In this case, what we want to do, because this left side is out in external rotation, we want to improve the ability to go into internal rotation. But we want to do that slowly and in safe positions at first. So a good place to start would be just an adductor pullback activity. This is going to start that process of getting that internal rotation back. And this is going to do that through muscles that bias internal rotation, such as that ischiocondylar adductor and the fibers of the glute med that help create internal rotation of the hip as well. From there, we can go into more dynamic internal rotation-based activities in more hip extension, which is a position of internal rotation. Eventually, the goal would be to get this person upright and be able to shift into that hip and load that dynamically so that they can go through external to internal rotation. That would be a really great goal for this person to have long-term. All of these exercises and their full walkthroughs, as well as the assessments and their walkthroughs, are going to be found in the article I'm writing alongside this video. It's going to be in the description below. Okay, now let's talk about the second one. The second one, this hip is stuck in internal rotation and it can't internally rotate further. So what we need to do here is get them to externally rotate that side. And we can do that through muscles like the glute max, which is going to help close that space, specifically those lower fibers, and externally rotate that femur and put it therefore in a more neutral position so that way it can access more internal rotation and external rotation. It's not just being jammed into more internal rotation that it doesn't have. It's also very important to be able to shift to the other side after we learn to push out of that side. So that's going to entail exercises where we can create a little bit of a reference of the inner edge of the foot arch to help push us over to the other side, perhaps in a little bit of abduction as well. From there, we can do again, more loaded dynamic activities that are going to help promote a turn away from that side into external rotation because we turn away from load. And therefore, if a load is unilateral and we have it in our right side with our right foot forward, that will promote a turn away from that side, and that will help us shift back to the left. Finally, let's talk about the last one, which is that lateral and superior impingement, which especially shows up with hip abduction. So therefore, we really want to improve the ability to abduct the hip. So what we want to do here is yes, improve external rotation on that side, but we also want to improve abduction. And there are some really great techniques we can do this with, starting with a reference of the wall and working more and more progressively up into abduction. The primary muscle we're gonna be feeling on these activities, hopefully, is the posterior glute med, which helps create abduction and closes off this side of the pelvis right here into external rotation. Once we're ready for dynamic upright activity, we can do a right foot forward deadlift variation where we are promoting a turn to the left side and a little bit more external rotation on this right side right here. I imagine there's some people watching this video saying, well, I think I have this, but it's on my other side, which is possible for sure. And that's why we need more of an individualized approach at that point. And that's why having someone you can go to in person is very much important. If that's you, I will link in the description below a place where you can find someone to work with in person who will understand how these asymmetrical patterns are going to influence this impingement. Thank you.